Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew, daily events worldwide. And we are on October 12th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. And welcome to the Daily Dew, where we look at space weather, world weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, everything affecting humanity. Starting out here, looking at the last 48 hours on the sun, 304 angstroms where we can see all of the plasma erecting off of the surface of the sun. And as well, the very bright sunspot regions which have been releasing solar flares and CMEs recently and just released recently today a B-class solar flare has shot out and we're experiencing the space weather from the last solar flare M1 solar flare which we were expecting today with an accelerated wind speed and as well cosmic charged particles so looking at incoming and outgoing imagery here We did have a B-class solar flare from the small sunspot region. And as well, looking at a pretty sizable sunspot region cresting on the northwest. And there's the active sunspot that released the M1 solar flare. And as well, the B-class solar flare, just recent. Another quick look at the large plasma filament ripping away from the southeastern part of the sun. Right here. Amazing imagery coming out of Solar Dynamics Observatory. Pretty active sun as of late. Outgoing CME there as well. Looking at the multi-spectrum here at all of the events. Over the past 48 hours. 171 angstroms here. Where you can see the black regions which are the coronal hole regions. We have an earth facing coronal hole right now. And as well, another one building ahead of the crusting sunspot. Looking at Iswa Spiral, you can see here another CME. We may get a glancing blow from that, but that was directed right at Mercury. And that's about three CMEs since Mercury has come through the retrograde since the 8th. Looking at a real-time solar wind, we're steady at about 450 kilometers per second. But we did have a jump up to 521 kilometers per second. But the big deal is here, the orange, the density, the bunches were up to about 32 bunches, and that is a lot. 33.65. Geospace magnetosphere, you can see ahead of all this space weather, this is what our magnetosphere looked like, and then it started hitting us hard. This is the last six hours of imagery. Space weather... That is our wind, and here is our pressure cut planes, magnetosphere cut planes for pressure. That was ahead of all of that intense space weather from the M1 solar flare. And the pressure is still on our planet, but we're pretty low for earthquakes right now, hovering just over 200. Solar X-ray flux slightly bumped up today to B-class, and we were sitting at a G3-level storm today. KP index was up to 6, and that was the space weather effects from the M1 solar flare. Looking here, Alaska 2 images. This is the last seven days, so since the 8th, looking at all of the images from the last week or so that our sun has produced. Full halo CME with the M1 solar flare. And that is right there on the 9th. And then boom, CME out the right-hand side there and yet another one, plasma filament eruption. Amazing, amazing sun. Schumann resonance for today, a power of 10. A low power considering everything that's going on around the world. Power of 10, a quality of 11.7. Amplitude 17. And across the Northern Hemisphere, North Dakota, Calgary, Alberta, Fort McMurray, Alberta, they were enlightened by the Northern Lights. Norway, Saskatchewan, all across the Northern Hemisphere. Last night, the storm started, and we are going to see it again tonight across most of Canada and as well the Northern States. Dakota, Montana, 
northern Ontario, Quebec. We'll see it all. So very exciting times, amazing imagery coming out from the auroras the last night. Let's have a look at earthquakes here for the last 24 hours. We're going to start out here in Russia with a 5.8 earthquake that struck 59 kilometer depth. As well, a 5.2 here, Izu Islands, Japan region. 4.9, Itoman, Japan, 36 kilometer depth. Philippines seeing a 5.0 here, 68 kilometer depth. 4.1 here in Basho, Indonesia, 536 kilometer depth, very deep earthquake for the region. Papua New Guinea seeing a pretty deep earthquake as well, 4.9, 127. Vanuatu seeing a 5.4, 517 kilometer depth, and as well a 513 kilometer depth, 4.5 there, Tonga region. 4.8 earthquake, 165 kilometer depth, Opanake, New Zealand, and then a lot of activity recently there. Hawaii is still seeing a lot of activity as well. 3.1 reported, 34 kilometer depth, largest of the day, and the lake still is active. The caldera, the lava lake. Largest earthquake throughout here today, Chignac, Alaska, 3.5. And then a pretty rare, her, rare earthquake here offshore, Vancouver Island, Canada, 4.1 earthquake at a 10 kilometer depth. We've been expecting that, and I've been waiting a long time for some Juan de Fuca action, and it's a coming. 3.8 there, Petrolia. Santa Cruz off the coast of California, seeing a 3.3 today. Mina Nevada, 3.5, 2.9 Mina Nevada. As well, minor earthquakes here through White City, New Mexico. A minor 2.5 there, Oklahoma. 4.1 here in Reforma, Mexico, 83 kilometer depth. As well, Dominican Republic, Boca de Guma, seeing a 3.8. And a 5.0 here in Colombia being reported, 149 kilometer depth. And then a very deep 4.2 earthquake, 603 kilometer depth in Brazil, 175 kilometers south southwest. And as well, seeing a 4.9 just south of that towards the Sabancaya volcano. Now, we can expect maybe a large eruption, Sabancaya. We'll have to see. And as well, a Chile seeing a 4.0 there. 4.8 here, South Sandwich Islands. Continuing earthquakes all around the Michael volcano. And then our largest earthquake today, 6.4, started the day off in Palacastro, Greece, at a 10-kilometer depth. So that is the largest the last 24 hours and the deepest being a 614-kilometer depth. Have a quick look around the world. The last seven days for earthquakes, increased activity up into the African plate, into Eurasia, as well the Arabian plate seeing action this week. But not as much as the Ring of Fire has seen this week. Last seven days seeing a lot of Numerous deep earthquakes all across the Ring of Fire surrounding Australia, surrounding the Juan de Fuca Plate. North America, be on watch, please. It is way too quiet through the region. Zero swarms means zero release of pressure. Normally, we have something going on in North America, but it's too quiet. Let's have a look here at Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent volcanoes getting updated. And as well, satellite imagery, world weather. And we're going to start out here with Popo. Seven Kaya in Peru, go figure. La Palma in Spain. Nevada de Ruiz, Colombia. Swiss and Ajima in Japan. Nevada de Chile in Colombia. Reventador in Ecuador. Sangue, Ecuador. Copahu in Chile. Fuego, Guatemala. Semeru, Indonesia. As well, Semis Nepochnoi, United States. Ibu, Indonesia. So that's about 12 volcanoes getting updated just today. And we have an active and erupting 50 across the planet. If you haven't seen the activity report yet, please check it out. We also give you a show of where all the planets are. 
having a look at the tropical storms. And we do have tropical storm Pamela off the coast of Mexico in the Gulf, California, which will be making landfall within the next 24 to 36 hours as most likely a Category 2 hurricane. And then it will quickly move into parts of southern the United States. And they're already seeing a big mess of storms and tornado warnings through Denver, Colorado, Norman, Oklahoma, Lubbock, Texas. Big system went through there last night, and you've got another one coming through right now, which is bringing winter storm conditions as far south as Albuquerque, New Mexico. And as well, winter storm conditions up into Montana. We have two tropical storms in the West Pacific as well. Namthuin, Namthuin is centered just east of the Mariana Islands, as well as Kampusu. It was just east of Hanoi and will be heading into Thailand within the next couple of days with a lot of rain. Five day forecast brought to you by Meteor Earth and daily events worldwide. Starting out here in home base. Ontario, Canada, which we've seen a pretty warm day today. The last few days, we've seen quite a tropical push with that big system south of us. Watch for that to race just west of the Great Lakes. But then a long line of rain here is going to be coming out of the high pressure ridge developing. Look at that really cold temperatures through Colorado this week. Minus six, minus seven in some regions, higher elevations yet again seeing the first bursts of cold across North America. As well, Calgary most likely will be dry this week. Foothills, snow, and as well, snow higher elevations through BC as one, two, three systems are pounding the coastline there this week. Ontario, as I said, this weekend from pretty much Friday to Sunday, we're going to see some extreme weather moving through. Pretty windy and rainy event. No tropical systems to talk about except for Pamela, which, as I said, will be moving quickly across Mexico and into the United States and then head straight to Hudson Bay. Wow, go figure. The weather just keeps getting stranger and stranger, my friends and family, so stay tuned. Big systems spinning through the Atlantic this week. And as well, look at that. It sucks that hurricane right out of West Atlantic. And they're all heading towards Europe in the long-range forecast. But for now, we've still got rain moving through the Mediterranean. Big, cold, and wet system moving through eastern parts and northern Europe. Watch later in the week for a big system to develop. Heading into the United Kingdom... Cold high pressure ridge moving out of Russia this week. But look at these cold temperatures. They are really starting to invade. And again, higher elevations, colder temperatures, collapsed magnetosphere. It's all adding up. It's evident. Having a look across Southeast Asia, tropical system heading into Thailand, and monsoon rains will continue through parts of India and Pakistan this week. Overlooking Australia, low pressure system will be affecting parts of southeast Australia, widespread thunderstorms through parts of northeast, but that's a big system to be coming through Thursday to Saturday for southeastern parts of Victoria, Australia. Overlooking the Pacific, no major systems heading towards Hawaii this week. Just daily evaporation rains. Intense systems heading into Alaska this week. Watch for an uptick in seismicity yet again as those systems push through. And then we get to South America. And we're going to be hearing a lot of stories coming out of South America this week. We've got some extreme weather that's going to be building in pretty much from Wednesday all week long through Argentina and northward into Brazil, Paraguay, Bolivia. Watch for those storms to get really widespread and intense. Quite possibly some record-breaking hail. Overlooking Africa, 
No major weather systems except for daily evaporation rain. We're going to leave you here looking at the northern hemisphere versus the southern, pointing out the cold temperatures, both hemispheres. Much love to you all, and thank you all for 40,000 follows. Much love, Duke Crew. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your morning due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.